Okay, and thanks so much for joining us. Today we have Maeve Whelan, founder of Milltown Physiotherapy in Dublin. Maeve, thank you so much for, for talking to me today. Thanks, Shona. Um, tell us a little bit about your, like what you specialize in, what your practice does. Sure. Well, um, I am a women's health uh, physiotherapist, so women's and men's health, and we often just, we work under the same umbrella. And we are a private practice here in Dublin, and we do a lot of we're sports, orthopedics, um, everything, the whole breath and neurology and uh, pediatrics and cancer care, as well as um, gynae um, and obstetric physiotherapy. So the, um, the lot. And what's, what's nice is uh, we do have our cancer care physiotherapist here. She would see people a lot for um, lymphedema and um, the, the other sequelae of, um, of chemotherapy and cancer care. And then she would refer on to us um, the women who are having problems with pelvic floor. And that might be bladder or bowel or sexual pain and uh, any other um, sexual related um, problems that they have going on. So there's a lot of us here who do that. And what's nice about it is people come to the clinic knowing that it's uh, that there's a strong leniency towards women's health um, in the clinic. And that's really nice. So they know they're going to actually get a, an open door. Um, just friendly uh, questioning, knowledgeable questioning, and a um, and a space, hopefully where they can open up um, to to us as their as their therapist. Yeah, like I know um, when when a patient is gets their diagnosis first, oftentimes they they know that they're going to be dealing with not just one doctor but an entire team of people who are there to, to help them along the way. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, the physiotherapist role within that team setting? Yeah. So the physiotherapist is one of the, the entire rehabilitation as well as medical team. And the rehabilitation team would be it's the physio and uh, the OT, the psychosexual counselor and um, the nurse specialists. And then the, the, the team obviously is the, uh, the wider oncology team then. Um, and the part of the team where physiotherapists is obviously we're, we're well out of the acute phase at that stage, we're into the recovery and the rehabilitation phase. And so it should be a, a nice progressive phase. So to have all of the allied health professionals and the, the you know, and everybody really working to bring the woman forwards. Um, it's just so important at that, at that stage. So physiotherapy as part of the, uh, the team is very much, I suppose we're in a nice privileged position where we have some time uh, with, uh, with the woman. We can sit down and we're, we're asking all the questions about bladder, about bowel, about sexual function. And we have then within the time and very often we would have, or mostly always, we have a, an hour long with a woman at that first session. So there, there's the real start of it. That's the first real time that um, that they've had as part of the rehabilitation. To say, okay, tell you know, tell us what do you have going on? How's your bladder? How's your bowel? How are things? What's happening to you? Um, in terms of sexual function enjoyment, what's happening at that part of your life? Would you like to talk about that now? Is that something where we deal with the other things first? Will we get to that? Or will we dive straight in and, um, and, and start that rehabilitation with you? So to have that as part of the team is just so important. And to think that there would be women out there who go past that acute care team and then are on their own uh, trying to figure out the rest um, just doesn't bear thinking about, you know, my yeah. heart will go out to somebody who's in a lot of trouble and just doesn't know where to turn. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so great that you're able to have that extended period of time, like a full hour with someone um, mm -hmm. to really to dive into those issues. What what are some of the um, the common things in, in terms of, um, you know, post treatment and aftercare um, that, that people might um, might experience? Like what are some of the more common things that people might experience? Yeah. So and of course, it depends on whether with, you know, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, what, what has happened. But if we if we sort of bring it down to back to organs and we can talk about you know age groups um after that but we'll bring to to organs so we've got bladder and bowel being the the um control areas that really might might suffer so bladder control there might be leakage 
Um, there might be urgency of urine, there might be frequency of urine, there might be pain passing urine, um, difficulty storing, um, difficulty holding. So all of those associated with bladder and then of course just bladder pain just you know that that horrible pain that you can have when passing urine and bladder um, and there can be you know a wider umbrella term which is bladder pain syndrome so all of these things can happen and then with bowel you've got difficulty passing a bowel motion you've got constipation you've got frequency you've got urgency inability to hold on to the stool and uh, and just soiling just um not being able when you're out and about to either wait or maybe just some passive seepage or soiling with the, with soft stools so huge amount of things that can that can go on and then the vaginal um pain irritation um the the symptoms that we associate with the onset of menopause and those genital urinary symptoms they can be there, of course, in a young woman because of the use of, I mean, every, everybody, you know, probably who's watching that knows this, the tamoxifen and the effect that that has blocking the estrogen and no longer having that lubrication around the vaginal tissue. So feeling that that tissue um, is uh, like a trophic tissue, like it may be in menopause. So that's just going to be that painful painful intercourse and painful any sexual activity. Um, so that is a, an, a huge area and, and what's really important is getting the tissue right first before you start talking about any other types of treatment that a physiotherapist might do with somebody um, with any vaginal um, vaginal pain um, and the, the pain may be provoked as in with any sexual activity or may be simply at rest when somebody's just uh, sitting or sitting for too long and then there's the difference between um, the, the you know the young woman who has had cancer treatment and, and really is still in those childbearing years and, and just the whole breadth um, of problems that that presents because of what she would like to be doing with her childbearing years versus how this cancer has affected her. So that's massive. And then of course, separating out what is with the menopausal and postmenopausal woman, separating out what is cancer related and what is um, estrogen, what's related to estrogen changes. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like so much of what you're doing isn't just like it, it's it's because it's such a it's such a personal thing to to like so mm. many people. So much of what you do is um, much more uh, not like not just the physical, but like a lot of um, emotional work as well. And so um, and, and like having to communicate that like with your pa patients and having your commu uh, your patients communicate that with you as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, and, and it's a huge privilege. Any of us who work in this area will say that it's a huge privilege for us to work in this area because anything that you ask as a physiotherapist about the physical in this area is 100% of the time going to bring in the emotional and probably you're not doing something terribly well as a physiotherapist if it doesn't because you know that's just the the patient not wanting to share or not feeling that they're able to share this is the the platform this is it this is where they get to share the physiotherapist asking all these personal questions so as soon as we start unraveling everything that's going on there's um, there's a sea of emotion in behind all of that so the, the physiotherapist acquires skills. Some physiotherapists have done the, um, the psychosexual counseling and, um, and, and psychology degrees in parallel, but, but mostly, and I've, uh, you know, and again, I'm very honored to, for this to be the case, but some, you know, some of my patients have said before, have you done, have you done counseling as well? And I said, no, I haven't done any counseling, but just after years and years and years of working in it, you, you, you see what people are going through and, um, and you see how to bring them through it and how to help them and how to really use the physical and, and, and really bringing out improving the physical in order to be able to treat the psychological. And then equally, if people are doing well psycholo psychologically, they're better able for physiotherapy. So there is the, the link in between the two, but there's, there's an awful lot that the physiotherapist can do without bringing in um, the more highly specialized psychosexual counselors um, or, and therapists because of the safety um, of being with the, the physiotherapist who already knows you. And, and that really does go a long way. So as I said, it's lovely to be a part of that. Let's imagine I'm a patient and I'm coming in to visit you for the first time. Mm. Let's go through this kind of step by step. What, what, can, what can someone expect on their first visit? 
Yeah, good question. So somebody comes in and they they sit two meters apart at the moment, but you know that's a that's a different <laughs> that's a different conversation. Yeah. <laughs> so there. Um, so we said we we start off with the history and we've got that um, initial blank canvas. Okay, you know what are what are the issues here, and starting with the current. But what are you? Okay, we know you know just generally or maybe through the referral letter or maybe you've said it first, this is what I've been through, this is my cancer, this is what this is what has happened. So now let's break down, okay, well, what does that mean? What's happening in your bladder? What's happening in your bowel? And what is happening to you with regard to sexual activity? Um, what is, can, and can we break that down? And, and what questions, and just going through all the questions that we know in terms of, and of course, establishing what type of sexual activity, um, what is normal, what was normal before and uh, and what way do we want to work through? What, what are we trying to work through to and what do you feel able for now? So we're getting the, um, the, the, the levels of, so which is most bothersome? Is it bladder, is it bowel, is it sexual activity? Um, or is it something that was there before? Is there pelvic organ prolapse? And in fact, you know, that's what it's to do with. It's not to do with any of the, of the current treatments. So the questioning with all of that on the past history and, um, whether there's been surgery, whether there's been chemotherapy, whether there has been radiotherapy and what sort of tissue damage do we think has been done as a result of that? So what are the levels? What is happening with each of them? What are our treatment goals? And then once we've established the number one, two, three in terms of level of bother, taking the history, what are our goals? Then we enter into the discussion of, okay, how do we think we're going to look at this? We could just talk about this and I'll explain to you what I think you need to do, maybe general exercise, paddy floor exercise wise. But if you thought you would be able for it, there is a great value to doing an internal examination to see what is happening, um, regardless of what the, whether it's bladder, bowel or sexual function that we're looking at. So nine times out of 10, um, or you know, nearly 10 times out of 10, somebody knows why they're there and they're saying, okay, well, look, we can have a look. I'm not going to tell you that I'm going to be able for this or it's going to be comfortable, um, but let's just see where we're starting from. So, and that's the start of the journey with the trust with the patient and the physiotherapist, because if you haven't got that trust in that first um, hour long session, it's not going to come. I mean, you know, if somebody has gone through an examination with you and you're not comfortable with that person, you're never going back again. You know, you'd need your head examined to go back again. Why would you do that? So it's really to the physiotherapist, it's up to the physiotherapist to really see and to bring out what, um, what the physiotherapist thinks by way of this conversation, what the, what the patient might be able for, um, and then really just seeing how, how far are we going to go in this session. But mostly women are um, able for, they've been through an awful lot already. And, uh, you know, often they are able for that um, examination in the first session. And, you know, and normally they are so much happier going out the door because they have started the journey of that rehabilitation and, um, you know, and gone home with homework. So back to the question, we've done the, um, the, the chat, which is probably half an hour. We've done the explanation of the anatomy and we've done um, an examination and we'd see, okay, this is what we're working with. And then we've got the home exercise program. So by the time you do that, that's what takes up the hour. And um, and just finally, because you're you you would be sort of towards the tail end of I mean you'd be post treatment and recovery, um, and a lot of folks find, um, you know, speaking to their their healthcare providers might be quite intimidating or um, it might be you know due to like personal embarrassment or just maybe not mm -hmm. even having the the correct. Um, vocabulary to, to speak about these things to their healthcare yeah. providers. What, um, what advice would you have for patients from the very start of their journey to, um, to start those conversations with their healthcare providers so that they're able to um, have that, um, that level of comfortability, comfortability <laughs> with, their, with, with, their, okay. with their oncology yeah. team and, and everyone going through the, the whole journey? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's going online and looking at some of the resources that are there. And, you know, the HSE has a resource um, on um, surgery and, uh, and on um, pelvic floor. And there's some Australian resources as well. They, the resources are there. I think sometimes when, when you know, it's not automatic and, uh, you know, it's not automatic that they're asked. And that's the that's the pity about it, because mm. it, 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 
it often is up to the, the woman to say, okay, I'm really struggling in this department or where do I go from here? Or this is incredibly important to me and yet nobody's even asked me about it. So, so that's a problem, but you know, we can't control for that at the moment. So exactly like back to your question. Um, I think if somebody has already looked up resort and resource and they have something in their hand and they have gone, I've got this, I know this is out there or here's be it a questionnaire or a resource booklet. And just, I have this, I have some questions relating to this, or I have this, who might I go to, to talk to about this? And they're actually holding up the booklet or the, the, the resource that they have. And, and in Ireland, particularly the, you know, that HSE booklet. So to just say, you know, I see the HSE has this, I see they've done this, but actually I've got questions for somebody on it, or I feel I'm in trouble here. And who, who would you send me to? So to have done that rather than to have come out with um, and having said, well, actually, I've, you know, I'm feeling like I'm not getting an orgasm now um, like I was before. So that's my problem. Who's going to be able to say that to yeah. somebody you don't have? That's just not going to happen. So in order to find that person who will ask you sensitively and, uh, and bring out the order of what needs to be dealt with for you, you do need to be sitting up to the right practitioner. So sometimes just, um, as I said, just having that piece of paper or having that way of saying, I've got questions about this rather than coming out with specifically what your particular complaint is. Mm. That's that, great. That kind of answered. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, I, I think like that's been that's been incredibly helpful. I think um people are going to find all that information so useful. Um Maeve, thank you so, so much for joining us today. And um yeah, thanks so much. Thanks, Jonah. Thanks for asking me. <laughs>